Hey, what's happening, everybody? It is Sunday uh, by way of Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Time for another episode of Selling Past Your Expiration Date. Being thrifty over 50, your number one host, Jay. Hello. Hey, hi, gang. How are we all doing? What's happening? Freezing. <laughs> Freezing. It's going to be 70 degrees this weekend in Vegas. I agree, you guys. We had 10 degrees this morning with 12 inches of snow. The only good thing about it, the ski resorts in our area are on, finally on cloud nine. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, they, you know. Uh, I, I was going, hopefully, Jace, I was going to hope to be toasting Green Bay, but. Uh, yeah, I'll say Peg Sports update is all going to be about. I'm going to toast to your sorrow. So, so sorry, honey. Yeah. At least you got to some of the big games and we didn't, we didn't get nowhere. It don't matter. They're still sitting on the couch next week. I know. No, two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So, uh, in the, you know, what, what I read, the two favorites won. You know, I was kind of hoping for upsets myself, but, you know. Yep. Well, but I, I, you might uh, not know this. You know, of course, Maddie, Steph, Nikki, our next door neighbors that you grew up with. Um, his friend from college was the coach for the Tennessee Titans. Real good friend of his. Oh, cool. Mike Variable. Yeah. So Very cool. Here's my sports tidbit for the day. Yeah, there it is. Not, not much. Not much this week. No. Well, I, I won't talk sports, but I'll, I'll, we'll talk about my meetup uh, meeting from last week. Um, we had a fantastic turnout because we haven't seen each other in a couple months because of the holidays and uh, us being gone on the cruise and all of that with you guys. Um, we, uh, yeah, we had, <laughs> uh, yeah, we had our high uh, area eBay meetup meeting and we had 30 people attend with five brand new people coming in. And uh, what we did, because we, we, we didn't have a speaker. Normally, we have a speaker, but we just kind of did a roundtable about, you know, how their sales went, what they did for the holidays and shipping. And, I mean, everybody walked out, said, wow, Peg, this is one of the best meetings we've ever had. I, I think sometimes when you just... Well, heard, that hurts my feelings. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, Jason, since, you, since you've since you been here any, a lot of those people are new. They don't, you know, they weren't here when you, you know, when you came. So, oh, teasing. yeah, but you'll have to come again. You know, it's always good to have you come in. But, but yeah, it was a really, really good meeting. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was really nice to to, uh, to have that. So, so is anyone watching right now in the Northeast Ohio area that has not been to my mom's meetup group? Yeah, because we, we have a great group. You know, it was funny because the, the waitress there, she asked me, she said, how many do you think are coming today? I said, well, I know for sure between 8 and 10. And then 30 people walk in. <laughs> Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> Well, you know, it was really nice because we're at a tiki bar. Uh, you know, we have fabulous cocktails. I mean, their cocktails have gotten really, really good there. And, uh, and of course, the food's available as well. So it, it makes for a nice combination. And the weather was decent. We had a really nice day for traveling. So that was good. Yeah, one guy drove, you know, you know Kevin Wren. In fact, I think Kevin's in the, uh, in the chat. Kevin drove from Dayton. That's three and a half hours away to come to a meetup. Hey, Kevin. Yeah. So, hey, hey, so you know, when, uh, when people say, "Ah, oh, that's too far," ah, we've got some people that are very dedicated. Oh yeah, I mean, I, for my class in Atlanta, people come from Alabama, Florida, and the mm -hmm. Carolinas. So, right, which is you know, that's really nice, really nice. Absolutely. Well, someone posted uh, only forty-one days till spring, so I like <laughs> <laughs> it's spring here next week. Our high on Saturday is sixty-eight. Yeah. Our high on Sunday is sixty-nine. Well, if I can't get Dad to go somewhere, how about if Mom just comes out and stays with sure. me? Wow. I got a bedroom in the office. Yep, I can do that. Help you whatever whatever help you need with, you know. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see what's going on. So, John, the uh, the name of the Tiki Bar is Tiki Underground. Mm -hmm. And what, what's that considered? Hudson? Hudson that? It's considered Hudson. It, it's so easy to get to because it's right off the freeway. Well, right off of uh, Route 8. And, uh, you know, you get off Route 8, you come up to the first light, which is the 303 there. Actually, oh, I think it's 303 exit. Yeah. And you just... It's right there. I uh -oh. mean, you, as soon as you get uh -oh. your button away, what your, happened? Your Wi-Fi went crazy, and you you were all paused. Oh no! Already? <laughs> he, I... <laughs> all right. So here we go. Let's uh, let's do a little screen share action here. Yeah, Tiki Underground in Hudson. Yep. So there it is, right off of the eight. We're at the freeway there. Yeah. I mean, it's just as simple as can be. I mean, you know, coming from all, all areas. So there's Cleveland and there's Tiki Underground. Yep. So very simple. And there's Akron. So kind of, you know, a little bit, a little bit south of the middle-ish. 
And what's nice about Cheeky Underground, they have tons of entertainment at their bar every week. I mean, yeah, I it's, see it's, it. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes, I, and mostly every weekend, they have some kind of entertainment, and they get some very good talent in there. Very nice. Cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So tonight we're talking about something. If you've been uh, in my groups for a while, you're gonna be like, "What in the what?" <laughs> Look, uh, we are well aware that there are uh, scam artists out there on both sides of the coin, buyers and sellers. Uh, I've mm -hmm. been the victim of, uh, or, or tried to have been the victim of both sides. But, but, and here's the big but. Here is the huge but. Huge. Baby got a big old back. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I would say 999 times out of 1,000 when someone's crying scam, it isn't a scam. That's why we don't allow it to talk, uh, talk about it too much. Right. Because... Just because you have a bad selling experience or a bad buying experience does not mean it's a scam. It can just be a bad experience. Like I go into, uh, we went to three tiki bars in in Atlanta, and we had a bad uh, experience at one because of the uh, staff. That doesn't make it a scam. That right. just makes it a bad experience. And so when people cry and complain online. Uh, I, I can, you know, I've been, I've been doing this for 20 years. My 20th anniversary of selling is com coming up in two months or a wow. month and a half. Um, and I can read uh, the whole story in between the lines. I can see that most are just, eh, that was just a jerk seller. Wasn't a scam, just a jerk or just a buyer who's just an idiot. Yeah. Now, now that being said too, there's so few and far between of scams and or idiots that majority of the uh, transactions that happen online, when I say majority, I see like 99% go off without a hitch, without a problem. Right. However, there are those times when things go awry and there are things that you can do to protect yourself. And that's what I'm talking about tonight. Uh, hi, I'm a new seller. Hello, Oreo kid. Hey. What should I do if I sell something and the people told me if was not here? Uh, if what... Uh, can you be a little, I, I think you missed a word or two in that sentence. Maybe not delivered. Maybe they didn't get it is what he means. Yeah. Uh, so Oreo kid, if you could rewrite that, please. Uh, and while you're doing that. So this, we, this all came about because someone tried to get my parents. Yeah. And, and those, we, these are those rare times where I can't protect my parents too much from, from <laughs> you know, sitting here in Vegas. So uh, mom and dad were on their own. Oh, so he said he told me he didn't have it. Now, I'm assuming you shipped it with tracking. So what's the tracking say? Does the tracking show as delivered? Well, if that does, then, you know, once it, once it goes to the post office, it's it's their responsibility at that point. But you did everything you were supposed to. Yep. So we'll have to see. Yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. So uh, what happened to you, Mama? Okay. All right. Uh, I think I showed this on you know, one of my scores here just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, well, no, it was actually the end of November. And um, I sold this whole set <clears throat> of buyers, carolers. Uh, I took a best offer of $150 from the women, uh, from the woman, and uh, sent it off. And I, you know, wrap, when I ship my carolers, I wrap each one separately in bubble wrap, you know, so they're all protected and everything. And, um, and, and off it went. And then I get a message from her that um, uh, when she received them, that uh, some were broken, uh, some had stains, some had this, some had that. And um, and I said to her, my, my first instinct was, you know, because you don't want to, you know, make this a big, big deal. I said, OK, I said, um, I said, I said, if you want to keep them, uh, I said, you know, I'd be glad to give you a discount. Uh, what do you feel, you know, would be appropriate? And then I get this note from her. And she says, um, it depends on what sort of discount we are talking about. Only one out of the five are in good condition. Louise in the pink dress. Uh, three different people are selling her for $15 right now, et cetera, et cetera. Things happen. Every business accidentally pull, pulls out faulty merchandise sometimes. Whether it is a dining restaurant <clears throat> or the Walmart or eBay seller, it happens. What matters is how you handle it, and you seem to be doing well at that. So she kind of sends me a halfway decent note. Well, right, yeah, and so far, so far, my antenna wouldn't be up too much, but I do want to say, um, especially since I, I, we have at least one new viewer. Hello, Oreo kid. Uh -huh. uh, uh, people always say, "Look, I know I send out in good condition," and then I say, "Are you sure?" Because, and here, and here's why I say, "Are you sure?" 
because one time I thrifted a Hawaiian shirt. So I thrifted it and I looked at it. And then my assistant took a pictures of it. So she looked at it. And then my assistant measured it. And so she looked at it again and listed it. So looked at it again. And then we sold it. And so one of us looked at it again to ship it. And guess what? There was a giant ink stain right here on the pocket that we never saw. So when the customer says, hey, what the F with this ink stain? My first thought was, oh, what are you pulling, buddy? I go back and look at the pictures and there it was. We never ever noticed it. So right. it can happen. Right. It absolutely can happen. I'm a seasoned veteran. I'm really good at what I do, but I missed it. And I, and I don't have it handy, but I keep it as an example because it can right. happen. So, yeah. so far in this back and forth, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, uh, did I, did I screw up and not notice? Yeah. Right. You know, um, so I, I said, you know, make me an offer and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Well, she comes back and now, mind you, she bought all the pieces for 150 She comes back with an offer of $30, which I, and I wrote her back and I said, I said, I'm sorry, I really, you know, can't accept that. I said, you know, these are vintage early pieces and, uh, you know, still worth some, you know, more than that. I was very nice to her. And so with that, she said that uh, she's going to return uh you know the carolers to me and then i said to her i said can you please send me pictures you know of the damage so i can see what was wrong so we are going to go into that now jason can you put these side by side at all by chance with that with the big picture there or not honey mm, let me see what i can let me okay. see what shenanigans i can pull yeah, off this will work. work though so oh. on this first first caroler i want you guys to take a really good look hold on Okay. Put them yeah. side by side. Okay. And then pull up the one, you know, that yeah, yeah, yeah. my picture. Right. Okay. So I gotta do this. And I gotta stop screen share. Okay, that's all right. Bam. All right, super. Okay. So I want you to take a good look at the hat he's holding, the way the the, the belt that he ha that he has. And um, let's see, what else? I think it was the hat and the belt. Um, even his, he doesn't have the hang tag. Oh, the hang ta tag is on the wrong arm. It should have been, it's down below on the other side. Did you notice that? So take a good look there. All right, so right away after she sent me the pictures and I really started to look closely, I, I looked at the first one. I said, well, that's not even the same caroler. So I, then I said, okay, let's just take a look some more. All right, let's go to whatever you have next, honey. Okay, this is the kid, you know, with the horse. I show the horn in, in the handle. Uh, see that See that price tag? That's the yep. original price tag there. Um, and as you can see, that's not an exact match, okay? Now, when we go to the little girl in the white dress, she indicates- All right, all right hang on before I go too far. So okay. Susan said pants are different colored. Um, colors can be a determining factor, but definitely pay attention to the whole thing because it depends on the person's camera. Someone's right. rocking an iPhone 5 as opposed to my 11, going to be way different. Right. right? So right. keep that in mind. Yeah. You can't just go by color. You you mm -hmm. might be able to, but that's yeah. not always going to be a determining factor. Right. And, and, and they are a different color. Okay. Now, take a really good look at this one. She's telling me that I shipped her the girl in white with that stain on the arm. Now, that's that's that one's pretty, pretty rough. Yeah. Guys. Pretty rough, um, you know. Uh, and then the Mouse King, which is one of Jason's favorite. Oh, uh, all time favorite. Hold on a minute. Wait, <laughs> see if we got close ups here. Yeah. Huh? The Mouse King, she's indicating. All right. To so there, there's, there's the close up one. Obviously. Yeah. There's no stain. Yeah. No stain. And, and, and you know your mother. Do you think I'm going to ship out something or not even mention that it had a stain? Yeah. No, of course not. So, you know, so that now the, the piano and, the, and Louise at the piano, nothing wrong. But there, she's showing me a picture that she says the Mouse King's foot is. <laughs> and, and, and Jason, here's the thing where the, where the color situation is. His pants are really black, but they look burgundy in, in, the, in her, in her yeah. picture. You know. So as you can see, you guys, everything in my pictures doesn't agree with what she sent me as the damaged property. Okay? Yep. All right. So, um, so, okay. So I tell her to send, send them back to me. And then uh, took took her some time before I actually you know received a box. Now I get a box in the mail, and it's small. And I say to your dad, "Well, this can't be all the caricolors." I says because the piano and Louisa alone, you know, would take up the size of the box that I received in the mail. So if you want to show those boxes of what I received, um, th well th that was it, it showed the other one first, maybe, honey. 
that's what, what was inside the box. Okay, so here's the box, you guys. <laughs> now, I want to tell you, I haven't smelled B.O. or bad, anything bad. This was the rankest thing I think I have ever smelled. It was so nasty, I can't tell you. I, I opened it up, and I went, oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> you got it. It was even worse than that. And, you know, and then, then inside what, what, what dad was showing were with these batteries in a bag. And I'm going, what in the heck is this? And, and show the one, Jason, with her address on it. Okay. Well, and then, I'm going to show addresses. I didn't realize yeah, that was. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That, that was just coming big. But underneath that address, why I wanted to just talk about that was, she, you know, something that had been shipped to her with her address on it. Okay. Which she, you know, says that. So anyways, I get the, this thing and I, I contact her back and I, you know, I say, look, I said, this is what I have received. I said, uh, I said, I'm not sure what's going on here. I said, but I have received no carolers. I said, I received this box of, of uh, explain, you know, describe what I had in this box that smelled so bad. I, I had to take them out and put them out in my garage. Luckily, you know, I took pictures of everything. Now, of course, she totally denies it. She says now she says I'm the scammer. And I'm a terrible person, and you know the whole nine yards. I, you know, I said, "Oh boy, we, we got a winner here." So of course, I immediately contact eBay, give them a whole scenario that I just gave all of you, and um, you know they said, and I said, "I said I want you to look." I said, "I'm sending you all the pictures." I had to fill out a complaint, um, and I said, "I want you to take a look at these pictures and doing the comparisons of my 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 carolers and what she's trying to say I sent her, which I did not." And, you know, so we went back and forth and I guess, you know, they did contact her, um, you know, and I, I, I didn't have to give up my money. So that was good. And uh, so that's kind of what happened to me. <laughs> yeah. So uh, <laughs> Marissa says she doesn't know Peggy. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly, I, you guys all know me. Of course, the, the buyer doesn't, but I'm certainly not going to send out products that look like everything she described. I mean, right. just. You just don't do that without, you know, clarifying what you got. So, so that, you know, luckily it came out okay for me, but you know, I mean, the more I got into this, the worse it got. And I, I'm telling you guys, I mean, what, what was her reasoning behind sending me the stinky clothing? I have yeah. to have tracking with the right weight. Yeah. I, I maybe, I guess so. Huh? I guess so. It, it, it was terrible. Just terrible. And we were afraid to even put it in the garage. That's how bad it smelled that it was going to stink up the garage. You know? So, so there you go, guys. That was my story. All right. So now let's talk about some tips and tricks to, uh, to make sure that you don't get taken advantage of. And I had something ready and I somehow have lost it. So, all right. Because the first one is your item condition box. Use it. It's not really for your customer. It is, but it's more to protect you because yeah. if you are not, detailed in what's wrong with your items for instance had the rat king been actually missing a foot that'd be the ultimate the perfect place to put that yep mm -mm -mm. okay so here is a prime example of how you use because I, I gotta tell you the amount of people i see not using this is crazy so i sold this vintage pendleton shirt and it had a bunch of condition issues. Pinhole on left upper chest, right elbow in two spots on lower back. Small tears at bottom button, read more, uh, and left cuff. So we were very specific in what was wrong. So that is us using the item condition box. Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to go to uh, you know, arbitration, so to speak, eBay, and the customer says, uh, you didn't tell me there was pinholes in this. I absolutely did. And the reason it's very important to put in the item condition box and not your description, although I do repeat it down there, is because it is front and center on the listing right here. Right. Because that's, that's most what, of our buyers never get to yeah. the description. Right. I mean, they can see that right away. Yeah. Yeah. So use it. If you've not been using this, use it. Now, if everything is perfect, I, I still use it. I put everything is excellent. Everything is perfect. Like we're doing CDs right now. Stacy's actually standing right next to me. Help me. Hey, Stacy. And so in my condition box, if there's a hole punch in the barcode or anything wrong with the CD, I'll put it there. But the majority of the stuff I sell, because I also can refurbish them, are pretty much on spot. So I just put everything as excellent. Now, excellent is a, is a subjective word, but there's nothing. There, since there's nothing wrong, there's not much more I can write. Right. 
All right, so that was number one. I can get rid of that now. Uh, where's our banners? Number two. Okay, be thorough on your listings. I mean, it's pretty much you know a little bit what Jason said on the condition, but make sure you're describing exactly what it is. You know, make sure you put in your measurements, everybody. Uh, you know, when you're selling clothing, that's really important. Um, uh, even on coffee mugs, I put in how tall they are and how wide they are. And, and, and if I'm doing tiki mugs, I usually put in how many ounces they hold. A lot of people want to know that. So be as specific as you can uh, on your listing so that, you know, they can't come back and say, well, you didn't say it was that that was not there. So, you know, just got to be more more explicit, I guess, is the way to do it. Uh, is it okay to switch out jewel cases on CDs if they're broken? Mm -hmm. That is the glorious thing of CDs and cassettes. Yep. It's the one product. I don't. I can't think of another product. It's the one product where you can change the housing to a brand new one and make it look brand new. Right. Like you can't do that with a caroler or a pair of jeans. Or I mean, it, it's 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 such an awesome product to sell because bam, fresh case looks brand new. Mm -hmm. Looks brand new. Oh sure. All right. Uh, the next one is look for red flags. Buyers refuse to pay through eBay. That is the current biggest uh, attempted scam yep. right now. Yep. Here's my phone number. Text me. Mm -hmm. Don't and it's do not just eBay. That'll happen if you're if you're listening on Facebook uh, Marketplace and um, you know offer up. No, you keep it. You make sure they pay the way. That it's set up per the platform. Correct. So if you're on a platform, uh, uh, Macari, I don't think Macari takes PayPal. It takes a, a registered credit card. I've also only there on Macari going, hey, can I PayPal you? And that's another red flag. Stick with the platform's method of payment. Uh, now, eBay is working a, a zillion payment methods in. So that's a different story when right. we get to that point. But don't take payments that aren't the norm. You know, the, and the other red flag is watch for the bait and switch. You know, you send it out and they're trying to send you back the, you know, the one that is not yours. So that, you know, be, be careful of that. Those are two of the, the main ones. Yeah, Heather, we showed them. We went yeah. through, the, I went I went to the individuals. And yeah, yeah, did I not say condition description box? What'd I say? Did uh, I not say, did I say something different, Kevin? Because I've been known to do that. So I'm not doubting that I might have. But yes, <laughs> the condition description box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is. Total opposite, Stacy. I mean, I, I won't buy any clothes without measurements. Oh, so if you don't no. have measurements, no, you, no, you got to put those in. That's and, and when people say approximate, I'm like, are your eyes deceiving you? You were you're reading the the measuring tape, right? You no, know, approximate. What? Yeah, always, always got to have measurements on things yep. that are important. Uh, we need no measurements on a CD because, right? For the most part, they're all the same. However, I didn't realize there's gonna be a CD class all of a sudden. This is a CD too. So if we're selling this CD, we have to say nothing about the measurement because it is a normal CD. If we're selling this CD, ooh, that's a different CD. That's a three inch, that's a five inch. Five's the standard. So if you're gonna sell something outside the standard, then you're gonna wanna put in three inch. But uh, if you're selling you know, things that have no need of a measurement, then don't worry about it. Uh, you know, maybe what Stacy you're referring to is, you know, we say not to write a book, uh, you know, about the items anymore like we used to back in the day but you know just do item specifics just you know make it real brief and short but make sure you get the measurements in there you know like i put if i'm doing a, a t-shirt i'll say neck to hemline and give it the inches and the centimeters and then i will also do the armpit to armpit so no, Heather, are i was going picture by picture i was going yeah so i when you go back and watch i started with a group photo and then i went to the individuals right right you're there yep you're there. Mm -hmm. All right, number seven, contact mm -hmm. eBay when an actual problem happens. And the, the reason I put actual in there is because so many people call eBay for the dumbest, wrongest things. Right. Again, just because you have a jerk buyer doesn't mean it's an actual problem. Now, if someone starts saying, hey, um, you know, I want to pay a different way or I want you to refund me $50 and, and, uh, or I'm going to leave you negative feedback. That's when there's a problem now. Now you can co contact eBay and say, Hey, they're trying to get me to refund them or they're going to leave negative feedback, which is a huge no, no. But just cause a guy is like, you know, this is a different blue than you said. That's not really a problem. That's just our eyes, his eyes, his monitor, our camera. 
Okay. So don't call for that. If there's an actual problem happening or happened, then call. Please don't call for dumb things because when people actually have problems, they can't get through. Right. So be, be yeah, make, be diligent about that. That's really important. Okay. Yeah. I got kind of jumped the switch on this one a little bit. Um, number six is familiarize yourself with the common scams. And we did talk a little bit about the bait and switch, but also buyers wanting to you know settle the transactions outside of eBay. Just don't do it, you guys. I mean, if you've already started, you know, discussing or messaging or possibly whatever there, eBay is going to see that. Then all of a sudden your market's sold and they're going to say, okay, what's going on? You don't want to get yourself in trouble on your selling platform. Plus, you know, the buyer might not be paying you up front with good money. You just don't know. So don't do it. Yep. All right. The big one is signature confirmation on delivery, but don't surprise your buyer. If it's something that's going to be expensive, definitely have it already in uh, in your shipping, in your description, that that's going to happen. You know, if you send out a twenty dollars CD, you don't need a signature. If it gets right. lost, lost shit right. happens. Yeah. But but if you're having an expensive item, absolutely have signature confirmation on delivery. Right, for sure, for sure. Okay, of course this this should is so important. Package the items properly. Uh, you know, so there can't be you know any any breakages or whatever. I mean, we all get breakage from time to time. That's that's going to happen because we know how rough the uh, post office is with our packaging. But if you do the best you can and package it good, uh, you should be you know in good shape because, like I said, I wrap each one of my carolers individually with three sheets of bubble wrap, which I really don't have to do. I could probably get by with two, but I want enough you know protection on those carolers when I send those out. So do the same with with your items. Okay, ask for pics of damage, but don't press it. And here's why I say don't press it. You can't actually file a claim with USPS without pictures. It is helpful to have them. And sometimes you can you, you can actually catch the other person's being truthful or not. But don't forget, it is not that hard to get on a selling platform and buy something. To the older people, it might be a heck of a trick to take a picture and figure out how to get it to you. So... If mom had a problem and she sold it to a 90 year old, they, yeah. they might be able to buy, but they might not be able to send a picture. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. think of it this way. Mom and I have done two shows on how to upload a video to your listing and mom still can't do it right. Right. Okay. <laughs> but remember that just because someone says they can't send you a picture doesn't always mean they're lying. Right. Now it surprised me that she sent me the pictures of the wrong merchandise. I mean, I, I, you know, after I, really I think that helps sink her too. She's in pictures yeah. of her merchandise, then a box of crap. Right. And then so with the correspondence that eBay can look at. Right. Okay. Yep. Okay. What do we got next? Number two. Number two. Well, document everything. Right. Everything you can in your messaging back and forth to the to the buyer, everybody, because that really helped me on mine as we went through everything that I had said. And, uh, you know, that, that just helped me. I mean, and, and eBay was very helpful. I mean, they really, really were, were good about everything. But make sure you get it down in writing. I mean, ask any lawyer or lawyer's daughter. She'll tell you. <laughs> get everything you can down on paper. And, uh, you know, you will you will uh, be happy you did. See what Angela said? <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. She picked on the wrong person, didn't she, Angela? Yeah. I had right. no spoilers. <laughs> and then number one, do not, and I used to be guilty of this, don't get emotional. It's a business transaction. Even if they scam you, even if you lose money, that is part of business. Now, we work in a virtual world, but Angela, who's in the chat, has a, an actual brick and mortar. Now, someone could come in and try and steal from her. Someone could come in and fall down and pretend that they fell down because of Angela's negligence. And then you got to deal with all that junk. All we got to deal with is this everyone's in a blue, blue moon. Maybe someone trying to scam us, but it's part of business. When you do your books at the end of the year, there's a lot in the plus column, but there's also things in the minus column. And that's part of business. You know, a tree falls through your warehouse. That's going to be in the minus column. Even with insurance, you're probably going to have a deductible. So, but, but don't get emotional about it. It happens. It happens. So when all come, if you've done everything that we told you to do, right. And you still come on the losing end, it can happen. That's okay? right. So don't, don't sweat it. The other person doesn't know you personally. So they're just a thief, no matter who they're dealing with. Right. They're not stealing from Peggy. They're just stealing from somebody. Okay. So 
once you can get away from that, it's not a personal attack on you. Uh, just treat it as business because, you know, I've had to call in a few times for things that that were uh, shenanigans. And, you know, if they didn't go my way, th- there was a point where I'm like, I ain't calling in no more. Because also, I've seen people spend three hours on the phone with eBay for a $12 item. Wow. Even if you are scammed and you can prove it, the amount of time spent on 12 bucks ain't worth your time. No, not, not and I know. I know you don't want to let the scammers win because I feel the same way. But man, those three hours could be spent doing a lot more productive things that would actually put more money in your pocket. No one ever values their time. Did you see uh, Ann Wolf's little note there about the video since you mentioned? Yes, that's awesome. Thanks, Ann. Yep. Woohoo. All right. So, a couple of things that you can do uh, to mitigate things. If you're selling expensive things uh, overseas, now look, we are very much proponents for shipping internationally yourself. However, if you're going to ship a $1,000 item uh, internationally, Global shipping would probably be the way to go. There are some thresholds we're going to talk about here in a second, but that way they're responsible for it. All you got to do is get it to Kentucky in one piece. And for the most part, they're responsible after the fact. Okay, here are the thresholds. Majority of the countries, the threshold's $2,500. So if you are selling a $10,000 item, and you're going to have to do a little bit more work, but majority of us don't have $10,000 items. We usually don't even have $1,000 items. But if you did, uh, Dominican Republic and El Salvador, your maximum sale price is going to be 200 bucks. Russia, actually, they kicked out Russia. So I don't think Russia's not even in there. Uh, but as you can see, there's only about 20 more countries, and the rest are 2500 bucks. So expensive items, internationally, use global shipping. And uh, you can insure your packages uh, uh, through... The USPS, right through eBay, through ShipSaver, which is a third party. And if you're using Pirate Ship, like you should be, you can insure uh, there too. So uh, is that my screenshot? Yeah. So I was, uh, I just used a buddy of mine's address in England and pretended I was sending him a thousand dollar item and the insurance was 13 bucks. So really a small price to pay to insure a thousand dollar item. Uh, so don't forget to add insurance. Now we have five. On people insuring every single package they ship. And usually it's lesser things, but they were spending one to two dollars a package. When's the last time you had a filed insurance claim? Uh, uh about a month ago. Okay, and before that, long time. Right. I haven't had filed one in forever. So yeah. if I would have tacked on uh, uh, uh my, to my cost column a dollar to two dollars per item, that adds up. I sell a lot of items, right. so you know. Don't worry. I mean, because and also, if you're shipping priority, it comes with insurance. But you know, definitely extra insure your expensive items for sure. But just normal price stuff. Don't sweat it too much. No. All right. The chipper chipper. Oh, and one last thing I want to talk about. So uh, this it was my most expensive item sold to date. Uh, this is a fifteen thousand dollar watch I sold on eBay for my mom of all people. Mm-hmm. And here is how we took care of $15,000. Now, luckily, it went uh, close. We live in Vegas. It went to LA. And we used escrow.com, which is the the, uh, official escrow website that eBay uses. So the way escrow.com works is uh, it puts the money in escrow. There's hoops that both the buyer and the seller have to jump through. And then once everyone is satisfied, um, then the money is released to the seller. Uh, on a fifteen thousand dollar item, the escrow would be about five hundred bucks, give or take. So you're, you know, it's an added cost. But man, if you're selling a fifteen thousand dollar item, you definitely want to be protected. Correct. And I highly recommend. I've only had to use it once, uh, luckily or unluckily. I've only ever sold one fifteen thousand dollar item. But the but escrow.com worked perfectly. Customer was happy. I was happy. You know, mom and dad were happy because I sold the watch yeah. for them. Yep. Yeah. That, so, that, that was before we were selling. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So escrow.com can definitely help you. Now, uh, all that being said, can can stuff still happen? Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. Can something just get lost? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I saw someone the other day in another group saying, yeah, my last package got lost to, uh, oh, crap, where they say? It wasn't one of the big three that are usually problems. Russia, Italy, and Brazil are the biggest three. It was some other country. They're like, I'm not shipping that country ever again. I'm like, you know what? I lost a package going to LA and I live three and a half hours from LA. I'm not going to cut out the state of California. It just happens. No biggie. I mean, it is a biggie, but still, what are you going to do? Sometimes 
You can't do anything but just write in the loss column and move on. Did you see uh, Axton menswear note there, the last one? Hold on. Where is it? Yeah, the very, very last one. Yeah. Yep. See, ruled, ruled in his favor because yep. of the pictures. Yep. Cool. And look, uh, I thought I said I was going to tell a story. So real quick, I sold a reel to reel. And again, I didn't realize it would be music class tonight. How funny. I happen to have one here. So for your youngins out there who don't know what a reel to reel is, before there was cassette tapes when it was easy to listen to music on on uh, tape, you had to listen to it on this. This is gigantic. So you had a whole machine. <laughs> so I sold a reel to reel and the customer told me how to ship it. Now I have been shipping reel to reels wrong. So I'm glad he told me, but wow. then he tried to pull a fast one on me and said it came broken. And I'm like, oh. there ain't no way. And I said, can you, can you please send me a picture? And so he sent me the picture like this, mm -hmm. Oops, sorry, like, like this. So I couldn't see any, I I couldn't see this or this, or, I could just see this. And he wouldn't send a picture of mm -hmm. the cover. Yeah. Now I noticed right away that the spine he sent was blue, and the and the one I saw was black. And there wasn't even a case of different cameras monitors. It was yeah. clearly one was blue and one was black. So he tried to get uh, money from me, and I said no way. Showed eBay his picture, his vague picture, mm -hmm. and my pictures, and uh, they ruled in my favor. He then went the extra mile to list the broken one, which was the one I sent him now. And he stepped on it and broke it uh, and called me out by name in the listing saying I was stealing money from his church, which he was raising money for. Oh boy. <laughs> so now there's a, fit, a footprint on the reel, which was now broken. And, you know, in my pictures, there was no footprint, obviously. And right. so eBay actually shut him all the way down because of the shenanigans he tried to pull. So again, whoops. Again, I didn't get emotional about it. I kind of laughed about it. Mm -hmm. And with, with proof and, and all my correspondence with eBay, they, they took care of me both times. That's good. That's good. I mean, you know, it, eBay's back behind you, you guys. Yep. They'll, they'll, they'll hang in there for you. All right. Sure. So uh, okay. don't be afraid. Just keep selling cool stuff, but there are ways to protect yourself. All right, so we got some fun pictures. Each week, we share a couple pictures of mom and I, uh, embarrassing and or cute and or funny. <laughs> and before I show it, I'll make sure my stuff's in order here. Okay. Yep, there we go. So apparently, my mother wants a dress to match the uh, the the uh, <laughs> the uh, wallpaper. Yeah, I, I, that, that was one of the reasons why. And I Todd Peggy. Yeah. This is uh, 1967, everybody. And... Uh, uh, this is actually, I think that's mom. Is that my house or mom's house? No, no, that's at our house. That was in the in the century home we had. And uh, I was big into, you know, antiques. And the, I don't know how old. I wonder how many of you know what's hanging on the wall. Should we ask that first? Yeah. Said, yeah, before mom tells what it is, maybe some of you will know. And I was so proud of that purchase. That was one of my purchases. And, of course, the hair on top of my head is fake because that's when I was doing the fake curls. So, you know, and... Uh, yeah, yeah. How, how many know what's going on? What this mirror is made from? Let's see if we have. Uh, oh, okay, we got some. We got some answers. Not a bedpan. My my wife said a bedpan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Heather got it. Susan got it. Another Heather got it. Yeah. Station got it. Yep. Larry got it. Yep. And of course, they put a mirror in it, and I just thought that <laughs> Tom is funny. Shark jaw. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, but look at that hairdo. Oh, my goodness gracious. All right. I haven't really showed a good embarrassing one in a while, so I rolled across one that – oh, hang on. I got to set this up. Hang on a sec. I got to okay. – all right. So here's Mama's boy. Let me, let me set this up. Okay. All right. So uh, this is uh, me in New Orleans. Oh, my goodness. In, in 1985, I am 14 years old, but wow. always being a big guy, I was already pretty much adult size. Uh, yeah, not not the best quality picture, but I wanted to point out two things. Are you are you ready for the embarrassing part? Let's see how short my shorts are. <laughs> well, they were in style then. <laughs> uh, I will say that is a a, a see through uh, swatch watch, which I I wish I still had. Oh yeah. All right, so so short shorts. Are you ready for the best part though? Let's check out my shoes and socks. Oh boy. <laughs> Let me get. Let me give you the whole photo now. 
Oh, Jason, I, I don't even remember that. That's when we were in New Orleans in the motorhome, I think. That's a, that's a, I, and I'm pretty sure those were Terry Cloth shorts too. That's a <laughs> sexy outfit I got going on there. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. I've not done a good, embarrassing one in quite a while. <laughs> that was a good one. I, my, my hang on, on. Stacy wants to say something. Okay. If anyone wonders why I married him, this should explain it right there. <laughs> that's it. Irresistible. Sex, sex personified, Stace. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, oh lord some kind of dress up night nope we're just hanging out in new orleans now that was a showgirl from one of the uh you know shows yeah but uh colorblind heck no that was the 80s baby anytime oh, yeah. you work neon in you worked it in oh, yeah, that was definitely neon neon time <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Love it. Love it. All right. So we're going to start doing once a month panel shows on thrifty business. When I mean by panel shows, uh, there's gonna be like three or four guests and they're all going to be from the same, uh, walk of what do we, what do we, what was the good word we used there today? Same walk of life. Demographic. Demographic yes. So our first panel is this month. I don't know if we're going to keep the name, the longboard crew, but one of my admins came up with that and kind of liked it. Uh, uh, so this week is the LGBTQ panel. And uh, we got a couple. Uh, we got a couple of guests. I'm working on a couple more. And the reason I do these panel shows is because when you get a, a demographic together, the rest of us who aren't that demographic are going to learn some things about things wow. within that demographic that people like to buy. Uh, so we're going to talk about you know them just being sellers as any other seller. We'll find out what their good scores of the week are. Uh, but I am guaranteeing there are things that the LGBTQ community likes to buy that mom doesn't know about. I know about a lot of them. I'm sure I'll learn some things. Uh, right. And I'll share a few of the things that I know. But we're going to be doing like a, a single mom's panel, a single dad's panel. Uh, uh, what else are we going to do? People who are stuck in corners of big states with nobody in them, like North Dakota and Montana. You know, we're going to do some panels uh, a different thing. So we're going to be announcing the panels in the group. So if you qualify for a panel, we would love to have you as a guest. For sure. So it's going to be just different people teaching uh, those of us who aren't in that demographic different things. So it should be. Should I be. like it. Ooh, that's I cool. like I like board meeting. Ooh, I like board meeting. Yeah. Like board meeting. Ooh, that's good too. Yeah, right. Someone write that down. Debbie, write that down, please. We're going to switch it to board meeting. Yeah, I like that. That's a, that's a good one. Yep. Very good. All right. So uh -huh. this uh, this Thursday, normal time, normal place right here. Uh, eight o'clock and uh, Melissa, my newest admin lifeguard is going to be my co-host this week. Oh, how nice. All right. Let's see your scores. Okay. I have had this for a long, long time. Um, I had it up for quite a, quite a bit of money. I, I, I think I started out at 175. Uh, I only paid 10 bucks for it. So I finally sold it. I took a best offer of 72 so, you know, finally went, I mean, it just, I just, it, it's, it's such a good mid-century modern lamp, you know, and it, especially when it lights up, it was absolutely gorgeous and compared to when it's not lit up. And I had taken it to different flea markets and so forth and finally got the offer and I told dad, I am taking that <laughs> just because it was sold. I mean, I still made good money, but it just hung around for a long time. Hung around. <laughs> uh -oh. ah, no pun intended. Uh, and someone's saying an over 70 panel and over 60 panel. Yeah, we'll definitely do a uh, senior pa panel. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, everybody, you know, can't buy numbers, sell, 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 always. Um, and I know some of you new people might say, how do you know it's a paint by number? It has a definite look. It, the, back in the day, there were little tiny numbers in. You had the paints that were numbered, and you would take it and paint the numbers according to whatever it said, the number on the paint. Uh, they have a different look. This one is an early one. Um, I paid a whole dollar for that one, Jason. It was found at a, at a garage sale, and uh, Mom sold it for thirty bucks. So that now, good. you know, these as the as the things at the the thing at the bottom says peg scores. I don't usually share my scores in the show. I I share them on Thrifty Business. However, since this was one of Mom's scores, I thought I'd share one of mine that I sold Ooh. this week too. So nice. what are the chances, Mom, because I've had this listed for like uh, eight months, nine months, uh -huh. that we both sell our Jesus paint by numbers in the same week. Well, see, it must be, <laughs> why, I, who knows, you know? Now that's uh, and my pair, my pair sold for 60. Yeah, that that's good. Nice. Okay, that's good. Yeah, it's about the same where, where, where I was at approximately, you know? All right, I showed these not too long ago um, on, the, on my haul. These are uh, three vintage quilted vanity boxes, guys, either glove box, jewelry box, hanky box, whatever you want to use them for. I paid a dollar for the three, 
and I took a best offer of 25 on those. Okay, I, maybe I could have gotten more money, Jason. You know, after I saw uh, who sold was it, Debbie? Debbie. Deb sold hers. Yeah, I think Deb sold hers. Um, mine only cost me a dollar, and I sold it for, for the full price of nineteen ninety nine, only because it wasn't in that great a shape. So that's why I kind of priced it low. But maybe I blew that. Maybe I could have gotten more money. And and yeah. and then after what you told Debbie about putting a record in it, I probably should have. You know, that's a great idea. Yep. If I find more down the road. I have some vintage ones around here that I use, you know, to hold my record albums. So, but they, those do sell, by the way. I mean, if you're on the lookout for those guys, they do sell. Uh, we had picked this up at a garage sale, the Corona chair. Uh, Dad had haggled with her and she wouldn't take the thing and he walked away. So I went over and haggled with her and she sold it to me for six bucks. <laughs> and um, we took a best offer of $45 on that. Nice. Yeah. So that was a good one. Remember, this was in my my hall when we were mom was going around her house finding three thousand dollars worth of goods, and that I, I was trying to eliminate some of my purses that I've had forever. So the stars and stripes purse, so it was mine originally, guys. So I did not thrift it, but I did sell that for uh, the full price of the twenty five dollars. So oh, go ahead. one other thing on the uh, panel shows, I do want to do a really weird one one day, like so specific that maybe we could only find like three people, like. Men over six foot five with pompadours who have two cats and three dogs. You know, I want to make a re really yeah. specific one and see if we can actually get like two or three cats. Yeah, that would be good. Just for my, just for my own amusement. Why not? And, and, and we could we could run a fun contest in the group. Like what, what weird attributes should we look for in one person? Uh, you know, maybe you should do a panel of other tiki aficionados. Yeah, I like that idea. Ooh, I okay. like that. Deb, like Deb, 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 write that one down too. Deb, write that one down. Yeah, because I always wanted to do a stump the tiki expert too. I want I want you guys to. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to do a show where you guys can you know get find pictures, and I'll see how good I am at at uh, figuring out what you got. Right. Uh, this why I just showed this, Jason. This is all pretty quick, honey. Yeah, you did. Uh, yeah, this is this is a treasure craft uh, cookie jar of the saguaro cactus, and uh, I bought it for four bucks, everybody, and sold it for the full price of what I have on there, Jason forty nine or yeah, yeah. The treasure craft was in the lid, everybody, because yep. treasure craft always marks their items always and um this was marked inside the lid and i did uh, sell it for 49.99 so that was a real quick good, good turnaround okay gee look what's here those of you who maybe are in the chat tonight that are new this is a buyer's caroler of what we're talking about and mom did sell the the uh, the set uh, which was again out of my personal collection i took a best offer of 65 for the pair and like I say, everybody, they're you know they're selling between twenty five and thirty dollars each, depending. And I, I'm just uh, oh, did you miss did you miss one, Jason? Oh, oh. no, no, that's the last one. Yeah, this the, I just maybe I went too low on this, Jason. Again, mommy sold this within a minute, and I guess I said oh, I guess I blew this one. Yeah, um, I mean you got you got double branded. You got Jim Bean and Skinner. Yeah. Skinner's now I think uh, have called it a day. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> you know. This 50 cents for it and sold it for the $15. But you know, I, because it went so quick, I said, Oh, I think mom blew that one. <laughs> I like this one too. This is a little bit off there out there. People that lived in strange places that led to knowledge outside the norm. I like that. That's good. That's yeah. See, I, I want to do something new with 30 business this year. I mean, I still love doing the show, but I thought we should try something different. And I, thought, I think the panel shows could be fun. Right. And then my last item. I think is that, yeah, Tommy Bahama shirt, uh, new with tag guys that I did pay bigger money for this. I paid $12 for this, but I sold it for the 49. So still make good money, but I had to spend some to, you know, to make some, which happens. I mean, you know, not everything's a quarter, right? I had no quarter items tonight, only 50 cents. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh golly. All right. So there's my scores for the week. I, I held back because we got a short week and I wanted to have some stuff for next week when, when when we get together. So I held back. I did have some really, really good sales the last couple of days. So we will get to those. Okay. Um, my haul. You know, uh, when you got 12 inches of snow, it's <laughs> it's getting tough <laughs> to, to go thrifting. And, you know, our savers are okay. And the, we have some goodwills. And they're just okay. They just don't have the stuff that I see at savers when I'm out in Vegas with Jason and Stace. It just is crazy. But anyways, um, I did find this. And I'm not going to take it out of the box, everybody, but I did find this at um, our uh, American Cancer Society uh, discovery shop, they call it. This is a Department 56 uh, Gone with the Wind 
of Tara, you know, the plantation that uh, that Scarlett O'Hara lived at. And it, it it was one of those things that if I liked their page on Facebook, I got one item at 50% off. So they had $12 on this and I got it for six. And I have listed this for $59.99. It does light up. It was in excellent condition. And I, I mean, it almost looks brand new. Whoever owned it did not use this apparently because it's in beautiful condition. So um, that I will be listing. Okay. So uh, Lori said, how about people that have both an online presence and a brick and mortar? Yeah, that's good. And I will tell you, one of the, the the guests on this Thursday, they have a brick and mortar and they do eBay and Etsy and they kind of got a system how they do it all. So I think that that's going to be very interesting. Yeah. But yeah. Kathy, disabled sellers is definitely one I want to do. It'll probably oh. do more than one, mm -hmm. um, you know, because I got some ideas how to break it into two kind of categories. Well, awesome. And these are great ideas. Boy, this will this is last you for a long time. Okay. Then Dad and I did hit... We, he didn't want to go on Saturday, and I, and I, I said, no, oh, let's go. It was an estate sale, and, uh, and the weather was just, you know, it was on the verge of getting going with some snow, and and I said, come on, let's go. So we go, and there was one thing there that I wanted, and I will show that. Um, that will be my last thing to share with you guys, but we walked down into their basement area, and they have a cookie jar collection that you can't imagine. I mean, tons and tons and tons of them. And um, so I'm going to get to those in a second. I, I got started with this first, okay? This is brand new, still in the box, you guys, of the peanut Snoopy candy jar. still candy. Oh, very cool. Yeah. And uh, everything that I'm going to show you, it rounded off because I did do a, you know, a group pricing. I bundled. And uh, so each thing averages about $5 per item. Uh, these, this peanut Snoopy thing I have listed for $39. You guys, they're getting good money on these. Uh, so, but like I say, it is new in the box, never been open. Okay. All right. I'm going to start with, uh, I have one, two, three, four, five different cookie jars here, you guys, that I'm going to share with you. I did not know this. I didn't know this character. I didn't know anything about this. This is a Disney and a Jim Henson Muppet. Well, I don't know if they're considered Muppets. They're the bear, the big blue house? Yes. How did you know about that? My job to know all this stuff. I know. Why ma why mommy and I never heard of the big blue house? It's because you didn't have kids nor grandkids in that era, so that you have no clue. Yeah, no, it, it does take batteries and it has a speaker Ooh, cool. lid. So uh, that means there's gonna be a video. Yay! I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Hang uh, on, hang on, I gotta get myself on the camera for a second. I went like this. Yay! And I realized I wasn't on camera. <laughs> um, but we don't have the, the right batteries, it's those little round flat ones, so I gotta uh, okay. go buy some but is it uh, all of them that i picked up i could have bought more and i probably should have just bundled even more uh they are in very good condition you guys there's no nicks there's no scratches there's no nothing on these so uh this one i'm selling for 59.99 okay all right so that, how did you know that mommy's flabbergasted I, i've never that i've never heard of that somewhere along so the way funny uh you know i asked the secret beach what kind of webinars they want to do this year and someone said i, re I need help with pop culture and i can't wait to do that one so right. that uh that's, that's pretty one. much right in line with with doing a pop culture webinar okay all right this next one oops where's my little tags in here okay is an american bisque Bell kind of reminds me of the Liberty Bell in a way. Okay, so as you can see there. Ooh. Oh, wow. Yeah, ring for cookies. And this one is marked USA Pottery, everybody. And it is on the back there. There it is. Can you see that kind of? There we go. And then nothing else on the on the thing on the on the bottom. And remember, everybody, approximately five dollars each. I'm going to be listing the bell for thirty nine ninety nine. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. uh, and uh, we, we always forget to say this, but everything Mom uh, found is for sale. In case you want to cut a deal uh, before she lists it, she'll happy to cut you a good deal because I think Susan is excited about uh, Snoopy. So Snoopy. okay, all right. Susan, so just message my mom or me after the show, yeah. and. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. This one again is, well, let me get my little tag. I put tags on all of them so I wouldn't uh, get everything mixed up. All right. This one, your, your dad picked up this one. He didn't look closely at it enough. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> this is another uh, vintage American bisque, the USA. Okay. And this is like the soldier on Sentry. See? 
which is pretty cool. And where's the damage you missed? And the damage she missed. And I, you know, when, when you looked at it, we looked you know, quickly. Now, can anybody see that? Um, I, see, I, I can see a little something. Yeah, it's right there. Right there. But if we would have looked closer on the lid. Yeah, I see it. So I have, I've already listed this, put that, put that in my description. Yep, yep. Well, that it, that is, but this is from the 1950s, everybody. Um, it is marked USA 743 on the back, right down here. If you can see that, Oop, wrong way. And uh, because of the broken lid, I'm only listing this for thirty dollars. Of course, I charge shipping on all of my items, everyone. So you know, um, and I did say Soldier Century, you know, because you you wanted to get it in. Someone thought this was a Christmas design, but no, that's not Christmas, just because it's red and white. You know, I was reading some other people's listings. I said, no, 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 I don't think so. Yeah, I was I was working on a CD listing last night, and I was trying to just copy the info out of someone else's listing, and they said holiday, and I'm like, did I miss something? So I looked at the songs again. I go, there isn't any holiday songs on this CD. Yeah, I know. I think just because it's got red and white on it, they uh, they think it's it's Christmas time. I don't know. I'm not sure about that one. All right, this is in gorgeous condition, and, and actually, the next two I'm going to show you. She only had two bucks on these. Um, this is by Disney and Warner Brothers. And we got our old buddy, Bugs Bunny. Isn't he cute? Cute. Yeah. And he has also uh, a speaker, but there is no way to get into this at all, period. And so Dad and I said, well, we mentioned it, but, you know, it doesn't work and we can't get into it. All right. And this is marked on the bottom. And it's got the, uh, this is 1993 Warner Brothers. And I'm asking uh, $33 for bugs. All right. Well, uh, Tracy wants to buy your bugs, so. Okay, Trace. All righty. Yeah. This is why you shouldn't do your listings and your pictures until after this show's over because, <laughs> you know, it, you know if, if people buy them and then you won't have to take pictures or list them. Well, that's true, too. That's true, too. All right. How about this guy? Did I see Wile E. Coyote just go past? You did. This is really nice, too. And this was cool. $2, Jace. $2. Hang on. I, I, I haven't done the dollars yet. Hang on. Man. Oh. $2. There we go. $2. $2 for, for Wiley. Wow, that's crazy awesome. Is this a nice one? I mean, it's the whole Acme Rocket thing here. Okay. And he's got the uh, same kind of um, writing on the bottom. Trademark. Warner Brothers, 1993 as well. And I was going to list him for $49 on, uh, on on Wiley, okay? There's some really, aren't they pretty, Jason? I mean, like I said, you guys, I, we probably should have made an offer for the entire lot, but there was like, I don't know, 50 maybe? You know, I, I just, mommy gets overwhelmed sometimes when you get into I would kept you busy. I know, I know, but we got enough upstairs to, you know. However, at least they're not gigantically big, correct? But that's what I'm going to end on because the main reason we went to this garage sale or estate sale. Oh, and I have to say one thing about estate sales, guys, real quick. This is a good tip. You know, some estate sales are run by companies and some people will say estate sale, but it's just them running it. The people that like own the house. Well, that was one of these. So you never know if you don't see. Sometimes they'll list the name of the company that's putting on the estate sale and sometimes they don't. So I would, you know. That's why I said to her dad, well, we should go. And it was a good thing we did because they were taking offers left and right. When you're at an estate sale run by a company, they won't take them until the third day or two, second day, whatever, you know, how they run. So the last thing I'm going to show you, this is the first one. This one I can pick up the other two at hand. Okay. This is the main reason that I went to this estate sale is because they had a nativity blow mold set. This one includes the manger. And this is by General Foam, everybody. This, uh, this, that's one of the good names. There's the baby Jesus. They all lit up. They were so filthy, you can't imagine. I mean, the dust on them was so thick. Uh, I, I mean, I scrubbed everything once we got home. And I'm going to turn the, uh, uh, the, the computer. Uh, these are the giant size nativities. You don't see these as often, gang, as you do the other ones. So I'm going to try and give you a good Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, like uh, Jesus stands 40 inches tall, Jason, and, and Mary's just a couple of inches shorter. 
uh, they had $40 on it. This was in, in oh, I, I, I'm going to have to back up a little bit. When we walked in, and I'm looking around the house, and I don't see the nativity set. And I said, it's probably in the garage. And I, I said, well, how do you get to the garage? It was, as you went in the hallway, there was a door to the right. You would have never known it was the garage. So I was the first one in the garage, and we were there 45 minutes late, Jace. And uh, we, we went in, and there's this nativity set sitting there. And they had 40 bucks on it. And so the first thing I went, I took the baby Jesus out to her and I said, do you think you could take 30 for this? They said, yes. This particular one here, we're going to list for about 175, 200 bucks, you guys, right. uh, because it, it, it's it's a good one. My last set I sold, I sold for 95. Um, so it, even though it's not Christmas, I'm still going to put it up now, you know, not, not later. But uh, yeah, so yeah. And uh, dad and I have been working on uh, new ways to ship and we'll, we'll discuss that on another future show. Okay. So, uh, Mar uh, well, Marissa said better get more bubble wrap. And, <laughs> and Lori said, oops, 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 they're smaller than water skis. Now, I don't normally share my soles like I did tonight because it, it went in order. But come on in, Stace. I want to show you what we thrifted this weekend. Oh, dear. What do we got? Uh oh, uh -oh. Keep coming. You're behind the. Okay, yeah, come on. Come on. Yeah, there you go. Uh, other shoulder. We other froze shoulder. Up. There I, we go. I froze up. What the heck happened? Why am I frozen? That you're not. I'm not. No. It is on on my end. But what do I have to do? I don't know. But there's the water ski. Oh <laughs> uh, shoot! That sat there so long, five weeks. It was half off. <laughs> they did some research in the store, and it was a, a good purchase. So should I so, try and refresh, Jason, honey? Sure. All right. Let me just try that. Go ahead and keep talking. So. Uh, even though mom didn't source a water ski this week, we did. You did. I love that. And, and uh, Stacy and I are going to be doing a haul show this week. We um, we have stuff oh. from. Uh, oh, mom's gone completely. We have stuff from our New York trip. We have stuff from our Atlanta trip, and we hit Savers and uh, Buffalo Exchange with Debbie on this past uh, Saturday, and found tons of stuff like. Tons. So um, there's mom coming back. Yep. Okay. So mom and I will have a uh, mom and I, Stacy and I. Well, mom. Yeah. That water ski one more time. Nope. Nope. Sorry, we been put away. <laughs> All right, bring it over here. <laughs> Let's see, Stace. How much did you pay for it? Uh, fifteen. So yeah. turn it. Ooh, that's a good one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You should get some good money on that uh, one. Someone said there isn't two. No, this is like a one one skier. That's why it's yeah. got the it's got the space for two feet. the two feet right there. It's kind of slalom. I yes. Slalom. So not every water ski you need two. That's one where you only have yeah. one. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, we got Stacey and I got a lot of great stuff to share, including a sweater I found in New York City. Cool. That the only two listed on eBay are in the uh, five to $600 range. And I think I paid 25 bucks for it. Yeah. That's a very, that, yeah, that you should make real good money on that. Real good money. So that's all I got for us, gang. QL. Yeah. yeah. So those of you who were interested in, in some of the cookie jars, just, um, you know, send me a message, you guys, and we'll get you taken care of. Sweet. All right. So uh, for sure, Thursday, obviously, is thrifty business. Uh, right. Stacey and I are going to do a haul show. We just got to look at the calendar and figure out when we're going to throw it in. Plus, we're organizing all the stuff that we found in those three cities tomorrow. Good. And I got to tell you, my class came to life in the stuff we found. Uh, what we share on Thrifty Business came to life. What mom shares, obviously, with the uh, Wawarski came to life. So the things that we talk about, whether you take my class, whether you're in the Secret Beach, watch uh, Thrifty Business and this show or in the Thrifting Board, all the stuff we talk about came to life over the last three shopping trips. And, you know, I had my best December ever, ever, and it's everything I've taught everyone else. So that yep. stuff is out there. It can be found. Uh, it can be found at the right price for flipping. So tune in, and you'll learn a lot. Plus, stacy has gotten really good at picking. So she, uh, she's, she's getting better and better. That's for darn Who sure. knew that my best thrifting partner was going to be right in my same house? <laughs> I love it. Because if you don't know my wife, for those of you who are new, she hates thrifting, or she did, I should say. Yeah, I think that's fair. She's, she's a champ now, right, honey? Yep. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, she is full surprises. Keeps me on my toes. All right. So uh, stay tuned. You will see uh, the post for when we do the thrift haul. So stay tuned for that yeah. in the thrifting board and any one of my other pages. So with that, oh, uh, when you do classes in different cities, do you visit, do you cover the same topics and all them? Uh, yes, I do. Um, the class uh, that I just did in Atlanta will be the class I'll do all year, but there is a section that is specific to each and every location I go to. All right. Uh, and I will be coming to Canada and all kinds of places. So I uh, actually stay tuned for the thrifting board. There will be a post up of about 20 metropolitan areas. We'll take votes and the highest vote getters will be the, where we teach the classes this year. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Don't miss his classes. If he's near you guys, even if, even a few hour drive, well worth it. So I don't have them up yet, lady justice, <clears throat> but uh, stay tuned and you will see where I am coming. So I do know Sacramento is going to be one. And uh, Seattle, because I know I'm coming to speak at the Seattle meetup. Cool. All right. That's it. We're out of here. So for selling past your expiration date, being thrifty over 50, I'm Jay. I'm Peg. We're gone. Thanks, everybody. We're out of here. See everybody. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye. Stay cool.